Assalamu alaikum, my brothers and sisters. Not everything that happens to us should be blamed on superstition, black magic, and the jinn. We need to understand that nine times out of ten, or 99 times out of a hundred, it has nothing to do with superstition, black magic, the jinn, etc. And what is even more interesting is that the Almighty has taught us how to protect ourselves from being affected by black magic, by the evil eye, and a lot of superstitious items. Now, if we're not prepared to take the precautions, then obviously, uh, you know, shaitan or the devil, Satan will tamper with our minds. So for that reason, it's important for us to spare a moment every morning and evening to read those passages of the Quran where the Almighty has told us if you were to read them, then you will definitely be protected from the evil eye, from uh, the jinn kind, from black magic, from uh, all sorts of uh, superstitious uh, issues that might be affecting man sometimes. So there are two things I want to speak about this evening. The first is most of the difficulties we face can be explained by either medicine or by common logic or by some form of an explanation that will make sense to you. For example, uh, those who have examinations, sometimes they haven't been eating well, they haven't been sleeping well, they're very worried and concerned and suddenly they start hearing voices, uh, they suddenly start seeing things. Uh, this has nothing to do with anything superstitious, but rather it has to do with uh, the fact that you have allowed yourself to affect your body in a way that you have depleted the minerals and the vitamins, you have not given it rest, uh, and you have been stressing. So you are causing a slight chemical imbalance in, in the brain. And that is what causes you to hear these sounds and voices. And what we do is we immediately uh, decide that this is magic or this is perhaps someone doing something to me. We start looking at our family members whom we don't get along with, perhaps our in-laws. Uh, we start looking at people uh, that we don't get along with. And then we go to someone whom we think is going to help us when it comes to the, the uh, this particular thing. So we end up going to someone who is maybe uh, considered a pious person or considered a scholar, sometimes even a person who might not be that, but people have said, look, go to this person because they do this type of thing. What those people do, if they are genuine and legitimate, they will give you something to read uh, from the scriptures, from the Quran. They will pray for you and they will they, they, they might tell you uh, to get yourself a little bit of raw honey, which helps you uh, to maybe uh, get yourself some dates called the Ajwa dates. And they will tell you how to have that. They may give you a little bit of the black seed or black seed oil that is from the Sunnah, from the practice of the Prophet, peace be upon him. They may give you, for example, the sacred water known as Zamzam water. Uh, they may give you uh, f a few other things uh, from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So uh, these are some of the, the, the permissible or the Sunnah uh, things that you could actually do to help yourself. But they will tell you over and above that you need to read the verses of Surah Al-Baqarah where the Prophet وسلم, has told us that that surah is so powerful that the devil cannot uh, override it. Um, some A verse known as Ayatul Kursi, if you were to repeat it thrice in the morning and in the evening and once after every, every other prayer, so morning is the time of Fajr and evening, even if a female is uh, excused from the five daily prayers, she still should be reading these in order to protect her because those are the days that it actually affects you even more. So uh, you are supposed to read these surahs or this verse at least thrice in the morning, thrice in the evening, once after every prayer. And you read uh, the, the last two surahs of the Quran, uh, which is قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ thrice each and once after every other prayer. And if you want to add قُلْ, أعوذ, uh, قل هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ You may do that as well. It is extremely beneficial. You can read that thrice as well. 
So these are some of the chapters of the Quran. It won't take you more than 10 minutes to do that uh, in the morning and in the evening. And after every prayer, perhaps two to three minutes. If you're not prepared to actually do that, then you are the only one to blame because the Almighty is teaching you that if you want to save yourself from that which is superstitious, that which is uh, connected to the evil eye and magic and the jinn, etc., then you have to read this on, on a regular basis every single day without fail. Morning and evening is more important. And then after every prayer once, uh, you may read that too. So uh, a lot of people uh, have at the slightest problem rushed to to some uh, who are bogus and they don't know uh, that these people are actually bogus so to identify those who are bogus number one is no matter what it is they will they will quickly tell you that you know what uh, someone has done something on you because obviously uh, that's what will make you happy and that's what that's what you will you will actually uh, look forward to hearing you were looking forward to hear Secondly, they will tell you that someone from your own family has done something to you from your extended family. And the reason why we get excited when we hear this is because every extended family has a little bit of politics, a little bit of a problem. You will always have a little bit of an issue with one or two of the members of your extended family. If your level of faith is not high or strong enough, you will falter by believing this. And that is very dangerous. So if they were to tell you, anyone who's a fortune teller, uh, which is obviously haram to go to in the first place, but anyone who is uh, uh, pretending to be a scholar who knows, uh, if they tell you that someone from your own family did something to you, they are telling you a lie. Remember that. Because in order to know the unseen, the angel Gabriel has have to have, meaning uh, would have to have come to you. Uh, the angel Jibril alayhi salam would have to have come to you and he didn't so how could you know the unseen and people say well you know he's got a jinn uh, and he can tell well the jinn uh, you know people believe that there is good and bad jinn yes there are good and bad jinn but the good jinn do not come anywhere near mankind so those who think that um, you know this sheikh has a good jinn that good jinn is not a good jinn the sheikh thinks that that jinn is a good jinn but the jinn lies, lies completely. That's the job. That's the job of the devil. They would lie to you because the primary job is to destroy the family. When the family unit is destroyed and when relationships are destroyed, the devil's job is already half done, if not more. So don't believe anyone who tells you a member of the family has done something to you because that you have failed your test. To believe someone who claims to know the unseen, the Prophet Muhammad says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have disbelieved in me and whatever I came with. You have disbelieved in what was revealed to me if you believe that someone else knows the unseen. Now, uh, this is very, very dangerous. That's why I decided to raise it today because it's extremely important for us to know that uh, don't rush to the conclusion that someone has done something to you or you're affected by something superstitious just because you have a headache, you might be, you know, uh, have hearing a voice or two, you might be uh, having a nightmare or two. A lot of the times, look at the way you're eating and perhaps you will find you're not eating, uh, you know, healthy food. It's not a balanced diet. Look at your rest and your sleep. Perhaps you have a problem with your sleeping patterns and you're not sleeping correctly. Uh, also look at the stress levels that you are going through at the time. Perhaps you are very stressed. Perhaps you have issues with that stress of yours. So, uh, and there are many other factors. Look at your, you know, the, the other health matters. Uh, you might have a deficiency of some mineral in your body. A lot of the time, zinc and magnesium. Uh, some of the vitamin B, sometimes vitamin D, and you feel lethargic and you start thinking, you know, someone's done something on me. Uh, I'm feeling lazy. I don't feel good. When you have a deficiency, it affects your mood. It affects the way you talk. It affects the way you think. Uh, sometimes you get nightmares. Sometimes you can hear voices. Sometimes, uh, you know, you, you see things. And a lot of this, like I said, 99 times out of 100, it's connected to a deficiency that you have. Don't deny it. Go for a blood test. Go and check uh, again. Go and see something else. So check a few more things. And subhanAllah, it's amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would open the doors of those who have firm faith and conviction in Him. It is your faith, your conviction in the Almighty that will give you the cure by the help and the will of the Almighty. So 
keep trying. Uh, also, when we have a lot of baggage, like someone is stressing us uh, within our, our lives or we take things too seriously, we, we start thinking someone's done something on me. Uh, a lot of us have seen uh, failure or people affecting us and so on. Sometimes marriages, uh, you know, they don't work. Sometimes a person has had a proposal or two or three and maybe people are turning them down or they're not uh, finishing off, which means as we're talking about marriage, things break off. If it happens to you more than two, three times, what happens? Uh, the devil's way of taking you straight to the devil. So you go to someone, he starts writing things. When they write something that you don't understand, it's wrong. You're, it's supposed to be clear, number one. Number two is you're supposed to be reading things. So more than writing something, you're supposed to be reading things. A lot of the times, if you were to read things, uh, it, it will not be the Quran as such or the Sunnah of the Prophet but it will be something strange and amazing. I've read some of these papers written by some of them. They're addressing the jinn. They're seeking the help of the jinn in these papers. Is that what you want? So they, you know, it takes a thief to catch a thief, they say. You might feel better. Uh, and this is why we say sometimes you have so-called miracle recoveries because you're feeling better. The devil has made you feel good. I always give the example of a person who is struggling with uh, earnings. They can either become rich by stealing or they can work hard and it will take a long time. If you steal, your problem is solved. You've actually uh, done very, very well because overnight everything came right, but you've stolen. So that, is, that will haunt you for the rest of your life because what you did was unacceptable. But if you want to do it the proper way, it will take a long time, but you will have to earn slowly but surely every month. And thereafter, you will be a person who can make it, mashallah, manage. So it's up to you, even when it comes to health, you can actually steal the solution by doing it the wrong way, lose your faith in the Almighty, and go and get a, a so-called miracle done onto you where, oh, wow, you know, and you blame someone and so Miracles do happen, definitely, but they only happen through the verses of the Quran, the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallam, the words of the Almighty. You need to know that. So it doesn't just happen by people throwing bones at you, asking you to cut lemons, uh, asking you to actually do something strange. You, you know, take the rose petals of, of uh, pink roses and uh, pick 200 of them and lay them in a certain way and then take one and then cut each one of them. You know, they tell you that only because psychologically it makes you feel that you've done a lot and that should be uh, okay. So you start feeling better just by hearing it. I found a lot of people on a diet Listen to this, please, very carefully. A lot of people on a diet, they start getting issues and problems. You, you know, when you have weight, my brothers and sisters, it's normal to have a little bit of overweight here and there. It's not a bad thing always. But if you want to deal with it, instead of starving yourself to death, where you're going to be affected negatively in your brain, your mind, your thinking, your emotions and everything, you'd rather burn it out. Do something uh, vigorous in terms of exercise, you know, in terms of burning that fat rather than starving yourself uh, in a way that you, you're going to think something superstitious has gotten to you. You're going to break family ties and relations. And it, this was all in the quest of getting a figure like a trigger. You've probably used that trigger in order to shoot everybody down because that was the wrong way of doing things. My, my brothers, my sisters, remember this. When you have starved your body, uh, it's abnormal. So if you want, you, you, you should do something in a good way uh, to help yourself with that particular uh, health matter that you have, rather than choose the bad route. This is a very important session. The reason is many houses, many houses are affected by the false alarm. And as a result, families are broken. People believe stories. The innocent are being blamed. And you know what? We've lost our faith and we think we're holy and pious by praying a lot and so on. If you're going to believe someone who has a nice long beard with a big turban or looks very, very religious, when they tell you matters of the unseen, like it's just, you know, one, two, three for them, it's a major issue. The thing is what a jinn can do is a jinn can tell you your whole past because it has a memory that is complete. It can also tell you the present, but it cannot tell you the future. So these people intimidate you by letting you know a lot about your past. And you say, wow, how does he know? I'm sure he's gifted. Well, the devil knows. Shaitan knows. You see, there's no gift uh, if they have access to a jinn. That's always an evil jinn. 
then obviously they will be telling you something. But uh, then they will tell you about the present, something that you didn't tell them, and you're like, wow. Then when they get to the future, that's where they nail the coffin, the final nail. And they know, boom, we've got you straight in your coffin. So now they say, you know, your sister-in-law did this, your mother-in-law did this, your auntie did this, your, your, this one did that, someone else did that, your daughter-in-law, well, whoever else it may be. It's a lie. They did not do that. Remember this. It's from the devil. And even if a man who appears to be religious told you that, where did he get it from? He got it from the devil. If he tells you, I got it from the jinn, the jinn lied to him because that's the unseen. They, they're, they're now, uh, after having told you the past and the present, they're now informing you about future, which is actually prohibited. And this is where the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, if you're going to believe them, You've disbelieved in what I've brought. Why? Because I brought to you that Allah is the one who knows the unseen. So my brothers and sisters, bear this in mind. Uh, it's breaking a lot of homes. And the sad part is there are people who appear to be religious who are doing this. And I think some of them whom I've spoken to appear to be slightly innocent because they haven't realized yet that the jinn they're dealing with is actually evil and lying to them. But if they had a bit of sincere knowledge, they would know that we, we, we do not know the unseen. We cannot uh, believe a jinn, a devil, to tell you that, you know what, this is what happened. Uh, that is very dangerous. So as a result of you believing them, they then offer you this cure because the jinn knows exactly what's wrong with you. It knows which nerve is pinched. It knows what's happening. So it unpinches the nerve. You feel good, but you, f you feel good. And what you did as a result is you disbelieve because you started blaming people. You started doing superstitious things. And can I tell you one last thing before I go? A lot of the times you don't have a problem. When you go to some of these people, they create a problem. They create a problem and they make you dependent on them. So this is why I say, when you want to solve your matter, be very careful. When you go to people, you may go for help. I mean, people uh, come to me for help sometimes, and I, I, I actually have to sometimes let them know that, you know what, I don't think that you're close enough to the Almighty. You're very distant, so you're getting closer to the devil, and that's why you're being affected by all this. And a lot of the times, it's health matter. Like I said, it's a health matter. And what happens is, you need to know that when you go for help, uh, yes, you, you may go to someone you trust, but listen very carefully. The true people will give you something that is from the Quran and the Sunnah, something that is from the Almighty, Revelation and so on. They will not lead you astray. They will not be telling you that, you know what, uh, this one did that and you need to do this and you need to, you need to make a sacrifice for this goblin and that devil. All that is totally unacceptable. To believe in superstitions is ungodly, in superstitions is ungodly. And what you need to know is it's a shifting you away from the Almighty. Don't believe people who say you need to sacrifice, uh, you know, uh, this for... I know of people who've said dirtiest things that I cannot even make mention of here because it's so dirty, filthy, not worth repeating. And I've seen people who actually do that. And my brothers and sisters, those who perpetrate in magic, those who do magic against others, they've lost faith in God completely. And Muslimin have lost their Islam totally. Who, uh, the hadith says, Man sahara faqad ashrak. Whoever has uh, done magic, uh, whether it's a voodoo, whatever else it may be, they have indeed lost faith. They have associated partnership with Allah. They can no longer call themselves believers. They need to repent and undo what they did. And it's dangerous because it comes back to haunt you. Remember, you do black magic on someone, it will come back to haunt you, definitely. So you need to be very careful. Uh, don't ever mess your reputation with the Almighty by involving in such things. People do magic for so many reasons. Why? Let everything happen with the Almighty's power and will. Why do you want to go and do that which will make you lose your faith in the Almighty? So uh, sometimes people tie the hair, they actually, you know, put the pins, they make these uh, this little magical uh, potions, whatever they are called, uh, and they do things with them. All this is totally prohibited. Still, I say a lot of what happens to us is not that. So I spent a moment actually just warning everyone to say, my brothers, my sisters, uh, let's be careful. Don't be so 
desperate for something that you have to result in, uh, you know, doing black magic or going to someone and tell them, listen, I don't mind what it is, but I need these two to divorce. I don't mind what it is, but I have to marry this person. I mean, how can your marriage be based on magic and based on something that is unacceptable? How can you break someone be, uh, using that? That means that is totally satanic. Uh, and we want to call ourselves believers. Uh, may the Almighty protect us and grant us goodness and ease. And I end again. I, I know I said it earlier, but I, I, it's a very important topic. Forgive me. Excuse me for carrying on. I tell you, don't ever blame people for having uh, carried out something uh, superstitious against you. That's a weakness of your iman, and you may just lose faith in the Almighty completely. He is the knower of unseen, no matter who told you that this person did it, they don't know. No matter what type of evidence they've presented in front of you, it is knowledge of the unseen, and their knowledge is flawed. May the Almighty protect us all. I've seen homes breaking innocent people, and I've had opportunities to speak to both sides, sometimes all three sides, and you see See the innocence of the people and you see that they were not involved and they're being blamed totally that's a loss of iman you're in the clutch of the devil for the rest of your life because it's destroyed your family that was the aim of satan he managed to do it and it's destroyed it not just short term but long long term generations as well may the almighty help us mend our relations and may the almighty bless you all i will be posting this up on youtube shortly so if you've missed it on here you will be able to get it there جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اقرأ كتاب الله ترقى جنانه وتنى العظيم الأجر والغفران رتله روى القلب من نفحاته كالماء يروي لهفة العظيم Watch